Dear students, let us start with the ENT segment. The first MCQ I have given you on OAE. What is OAE stand for? Auto acoustic emission. Provide information about which of the following. The first one, integrity of the distal part of the cochlear nerve, integrity of the proximal part. So first of all, just be confident. OAE, auto acoustic emission, they are a marker of cochlea. They are marker of cochlea. Which part of the cochlea beta? They are marker of outer hair cell. They are marker of outer hair cell of the cochlea. It means that we can rule out option number one, option number two. In the last spell now, beta, try to be confident of ruling out the options. Autocaustic emission. It should click. Autocaustic emission, outer hair cell. Outer hair cell, cochlea. It means nothing to do with the cochlea. Now, I rule out A option and B option. Inferior colliculus. Again, it is retrocochlear. We can rule out very comfortably. It means that it is going in the favor of C option. So the right answer of this MCQ, the first question of ENT, the right answer will be frequency specific region of the cochlea. Am I understandable? Now, this OAE is a screening procedure of choice. So which are the important points related with the OAE? Always remember is a choice screening procedure of choice. But if the examiner asks you in a high risk baby, high risk baby, what do you mean by high risk baby? The, the newborn admitted in ICU, we will go in the favor of, we will go in the favor of better. Brainstem evoke response automatically, the first point. Second, on which day OE should be done? Always remember, it should be done on first day. It should be done on first day. One more MCQ for your upcoming need examination. OAE, which is the most commonly used autoacoustic emission. So I have two types of OE. One is spontaneous, one is evoke. And this evoke is further of two types. One is transient evoke OAE and one is distorted product OAE. So we go in the favor of transient evoke OAE. Wrongly given in your guidebooks, better be confident of your DIMS class notes. It is transient evoke OAE. Coming to the next one. All of the following, all of the following are true. All are true about adductor spasmodic dysphonia. So this is a question I have taken from larynx that is spasmodic dysphonia. So whenever the patient have a spasm, spasm of adductors or abductors, spasm of adductors or abductors, patient will have spasmodic dysphonia which can be further divided. We classify into two categories. One is adductor spasmodic dysphonia and abductor spasmodic dysphonia. So just remember this point beta. This is adductor and one is abductor spasmodic dysphonia. In abductor spasmodic, which is abductor, that is a posterior cricoarachinoid. In abductor spasmodic dysphonia, the patient will be having breathy voice. The option A, option A go in the favor of abductor, not adductor. How is the voice of adductor? So just remember, adductor voice is effortful voice, very strained voice, effortful voice. I mean, just remember, patient have to take effort whenever he speak out. So we call it as strangulated voice. Strained voice, effortful voice. Video stroboscopy is useful in investigation. I have even I have given on MCQ on the video stroboscopy. So always remember whenever there is any issue with the vocal cords, movement of the vocal cord, the best investigation is your video stroboscopy. Botulin toxin spasm. Whether it is adductor or it is abductor, just remember in both these scenarios the treatment of choice will be botox. It will be going for botulin injection. EMG guidance is must doing, doing bottle toxin injection absolutely true. So B, C, D, they are the true statement and the option A is for abductor, not adductor. So the right answer, false statement among the given four is your option A, is the option A. Clear? Coming to the next one, which of the following is not true about vocal rehabilitation of a laryngectomized patient? After total laryngectomy, how we help the patient? The first one is your esophageal voice. One is a electrolarynx and one is a tracheoesophageal process. So beta, I am having three options for you. One is esophageal voice. One is your electrolarynx, electrolarynx and one is tracheoesophageal processes. Among these three, which is the best one? Tracheoesophageal processes. Am I understandable? Esophageal is having a very poor suck rate success rate so the option is of will have a high quality voice and good success rate absolutely false statement electrolarynx is a hand held device absolutely true blom singer process is fitted between trachea esophagus the word itself is telling you tracheoesophageal processes c option is a true dynamic part in the esophageal is pharyngoesophageal segment absolutely true so always remember esophageal voice you swallow the ear keep in the upper part of the esophagus and release the ear in form of voice 
is was the first method but is having very poor success rate am understandable so high quality was not at all so option a is a false statement i am showing you this is type of a tracheoesophageal prosthesis which is known by the name of penji they can ask you to identify so what is the mechanism of action of bronchus uh, tracheoesophageal prosthesis just remember this point beta this is my trachea i put a tracheostomy tube I have removed the larynx. I have done laryngectomy, so we have removed the larynx. Now what we do between trachea and the esophagus, we put a prosthesis and this prosthesis can be used for creating a turbulent flow. Whenever the air will flow this way, when the air will flow this way, it will cause turbulency, turbulent flow. So this blonde single tracheoesophageal prosthesis is based on the concept of turbulency. Am I understandable? So whenever the patient wants to speak out, he will be just keeping a thumb over the tracheostomy tube this is your t tube tracheostomy tube and whenever he will keep thumb the air will move this way this is the basic concept of tracheoesophageal prosthesis clear so in this mcq the answer will be a option a is a false statement coming to the next one which of the following does not contribute to the nasal septum very favorite question of your examiner just be confident is it palatine bone? Absolutely yes. Is it maxilla? Yes. Is it sphenoid? Yes. Is it frontal bone? Yes. All the four options, all the four options, they are contributing in the nasal septum. But where is the catch? The catch is spine of sphenoid. It is not the spine of sphenoid. If you focus your eyes on this line diagram I'm showing you of your nasal septum, septal cartilage is there from upper part is your perpendicular plate of ethmoid is coming, your vomer is there, all these are major components. Which are the major components? Three major components I am highlighting for you. Mm, perpendicular plate of ethmoid, septal cartilage and vomer. I am understanding and the minor components. Minor components are the frontal part, is spine from the front, spine from the maxilla, palatine bone, all these are minor. Now what about the sphenoid? Because this is spine of sphenoid. I promise you, you will never forget. This is spine, but this is not contributing. This area is contributing. What is this known as? I am confident if you revise my class notes, this area is known as rostrum of sphenoid. So this is not spine. So it is rostrum of sphenoid. So the answer would be C option, which of the following doesn't contribute to the nasal septum. Nasal septum. Coming to the next one. Third window of it is seen in. Now what is this one? This I have taken MCQ from the autolodge. In middle ear, always make a concept. In the middle ear, we are having two openings. One is oval window, one is round window. Now, if there is any fistula, if there is any trauma, maybe surgical trauma, maybe any uh, temporal bone trauma, if there is any fistula formation, it will lead to loss of sound energy. Normally, what is the sound mechanics? The sound go via oval window, just one second. The sound enter via oval window and it comes out of round window. A round window is a pressure releaser of the sound waves. But if there is any fistula, if there is any opening because of trauma and license, the maximum sound energy will be wasted out. What we call it as third window effects. So oval window is the first window, round window is the second and if there is any fistula, any dehiscence, we will call it as third window effect. So intact round window, not at all, option A and B is a normal physiology. Ruptured tympanic membrane, if there is any trauma on the tympanic membrane, nothing to do with the third window effect, the option D go in the favor of third window effect. So semi superior semicircular carinal dehiscence is one of the very important topic, just worth remembering point beta, in superior semicircular canal. There is a dehiscence, there is a damage to the upper part of the upper tegment, roof of the superior semicircular canal. So there is a loss of sound energy. The brain is overstimulated. Because there is a loss of sound energy, we have conductive deafness. And which investigation is beneficial? Always remember in superior semicircular canal dehiscence syndrome, we go for vestibular evoke myogenic potential. Am I understanding? So all the tests of superior semicircular canal will be beneficial in case of superior semicircular canal dehiscence syndrome. In neat examination, just remember one point beta. If the examiner asks you what is BPPB, benign paroxysmal position of water, is posterior canal is involved. Posterior canal. Just remember beta, close your eyes, listen to my words, BPV, posterior canal. Semicircular canal dehiscence, which canal is commonly involved? Superior canal. Superior canal. And if the examiner asks you most common canal involved in CSM, which canal 
we stimulate in caloric test we will go in the favor of lateral canal so in all the caloric test or in csm which canal is stimulated which canal is damaged is your lateral canal bpv posterior canal semicircular canal dyson syndrome superior canal so this can be one of the potential one liner clear <laughs> coming to the next one this is a new fresh mcq for you anterior epitympanic cholesterol would like most likely to threaten will involve which part of the stuck which are the following structure now this are a little bit difficult mcq and if you if you can't attempt this one nothing to worry i will explain beta this can be new fresh mcq anterior epitympanic now i am showing you this line diagram i will be coming to the options within next two minutes first of all I have the basic orientation beta i am confident every student is very comfortable with this line diagram this is my external auditory canal this is tympanic membrane these are the ossicles now this area now focus your eyes on the board this area is epitympanum yes agreed everybody is comfortable this area is upper part of the middle ear above the ossicle is epitympanum epitympanum clear now this area now if you focus your eyes on this segment this segment this area which is anterior to ossicles anterior to ossicle near to medial wall i'm writing two words for you beta line diagram anterior to anterior to ossicles anterior to ossicles near to near to permont medial near to medial wall the, these two points anterior to ossicle anterior to ossicle and near to medial wall we use a word anterior epitympanic area anterior epitympanic area what is the other name of anterior epitympanic area we use a word supra tubal can you appreciate why we call it a supra tubal beta you are master of the basic anatomy tubal tubal eustachian tube supra tubal so above eustachian tube opening so yes obviously it is anterior you will never forget so this area is anterior to ossicle superior to eustachian tube supra tubal inter epitympanic now if this area is involved most common site is this one can you appreciate that is the most common site most common site is a this area this area is your prusex space this area is your prusex space just one second this area is prusex space no? everybody comfortable this area is prusex space most common now i am going anterior to ossicle in epitympanum this is one of the again more common site of cholesterol formation and if this area is involved obviously it will it will traumatize it will damage which part of the facial now where what is this area what is this area can you tell me anterior to oval window anterior to oval window on promontory we have processes cocliformis geniculate ganglion so this line diagram clearly proves that if there is a cholestroma in the a epitympanum near to medial wall near to medial wall enter part of the middle ear near to middle wall which area that is your processus cocliformis a surgical landmark a landmark for geniculate ganglion if your basic anatomy is strong you can easily crack this mcq entire epitympanum enter part of the epitympanum so obviously which which is a important structure in the enter part of the epitympanum is station 2 also known as supra tubal recess enter epitympanum and supra tubal recess both are synonyms so the right answer will be d option beta i have given deliberately this difficult mcq even if i am not confident of the choices you can easily crack the mcq with the help of basic common sense beta sinus tympana cannot be the right answer why because sinus tympana is near to junction of medial wall posterior if you have attended my dvt session i have clearly mentioned between posterior wall medial wall so these options all rule out am i understandable so we can go with the d options i have shown you i have drawn a line diagram just to explain you okay this area will in involve tympanic part of the facial nerve and it will involve geniculate ganglion geniculate ganglion next time cq gunshot wound to the temporal bone are most likely to injure tympanic part mestroid so whenever there is any injury to the temporal bone temporal bone fracture trauma gunshot injury most commonly the mestroid the vertical part of the facial nerve is involved am i understandable and what is the treatment we have to go for canal wall down mestroidectomy radical mestroidectomy in these conditions to remove the 
gunshot injury segment. Am I understandable? So always remember it is a mastoid segment which is commonly involved. Again, one of the fresh new MCQ. What is this investigation I am showing you? Yeah, anyone? This is what we call it as video stroboscopy. I will be showing you this investigation now. Can you see? Size of a dime and a woman and about the size of a nickel. In a this is video stroboscopy. This investigation is basically for mob mobility status of the vocal cord. Vocal cord. And what is the basic concept? Basic concept we use flash of light. So any choice with the option flash of light will be the right answer. C option. There is an endoscopy of the larynx with a flashing light. Is a basic concept of video stroboscopy investigation of choice of vocal cord. Very favorite question of neat examiner. He will give you this image. He will ask you this is not useful for. And one option will be like subglottic stenosis or supraglottic pathology. We can't identify anything about supraglottic or subglottic. It is a hallmark investigation for glottic segment, for glottic segment. Coming to the next one. Which of the following is a incorrect statement? Osteomas. Now this is on the tumor of the PNS, nasal cavity and paranasal sinuses. Osteoma commonly seen in frontal sinus. Always remember one point. Osteoma and mucosal. Osteoma and mucosal. Nowhere related, osteoma is most common benign tumor, mucosal is one of the complication of sinusitis. The incidence of osteoma and mucosal both is commonly in frontal sinus. Always remember this point. Osteoma and mucosal both are in frontal sinus. Option A and option D. These are true statement. These are true statement. Malignancy is most commonly in maxillary sinus. Absolutely. In nose, if the examiner asks you, it is a lateral wall of the nose. In paranasal sinus, it is maxillary and squamous cell carcinoma. And in Ethmoid, it is adenosyl carcinoma. Again, is a true statement. Now, fungal balls are commonly seen in ethmoid sinus, not at all. Maxillary sinus is the most common site for fungal ball. Bigger the sinus, larger will be the fungal ball. Just remember, in this way, fungal balls are commonly seen in maxillary, not ethmoid. So, C option is a false statement. Clear? So, just remember, most common, again, I will just brush up all the basic points. Most common benign tumor of the nose, capillary hemangioma. Site litus area. Most common malignancy squamous cell carcinoma. Site maxillary. Now coming on the PNS. Most common benign tumor, osteoma. Most common malignancy squamous cell carcinoma. In maxillary sinus. In nose, it is lateral wall of the nose. Clear? Coming on the last MCQ. One of my favorite areas shown. Which area I am showing you? I am showing you antimost part of the septum. That is litus area. Give get contribution from all of the following artery except even without seeing the choices you can directly click examiner must be asking about posterior ethmoid why because this area is anti part of the septum so always remember which are the five basic arteries supplying your septum anterior ethmoid posterior ethmoid sphenopalatine greater palatine and superior labia and this posterior ethmoid will be supplying the posterior part not the anterior part this is kessel back area anterior apostaxis more common but less severe in young age. Posterior epistaxis in this segment will be less common but very severe commonly in old people due to hypertension. So these are the important points. You should be aware on the topic of epistaxis. The right answer will be posterior ethmoidal artery. I have tried my best to give you the MCQ. Little bit, two or three MCQs are beyond your class notes just to give you a message okay, we can easily crack with the help of choices like I have given you this MCQ even if you got minus one in this question nothing to worry about this will give you a motivation okay, how we can rule out the choices so just keep a relaxed mind in the examination hall beta examiner is giving you four choices even if you have not read the topic apply the common sense and rule out the choices clear very best of luck for your all upcoming examination and we are confident you people will rock